إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The inevitable journey The phases of the journey are certainties Death is one The barzakh the grave yard is one. The day of resurrection is the third. And the everlasting abode is the fourth. This is your journey. This is the journey that each one of us, every person will take. A Muslim or a Kafir. إن كل من في السماوات والأرض إلا آت الرحمن عبدا لقد أحصاهم وعدهم عدا وكلهم آتيه يوم القيامة فردا Everyone in the heavens and the earth will come back to Rahman as slaves A disbeliever, brothers and sisters in Islam will have to make the journey too We talked about the phases of the journey in the last episode we talked about death in details we talked about al barzakh in details and we talked about the day of resurrection and some of the conditions some of the terrifying conditions on this day and we said like the graveyard it will be a garden from paradise and it will be a bit from the bits of fire. You decide that now, based on what you do with your lives. If you become a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you achieve servitude, if you accomplish servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will qualify to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that your graveyard will become a garden from paradise. Also, in the day of resurrection, the conditions of the people and the way that they will endure the terrible and horrifying events will be different. A believer will be comforted. He will receive some privileges. Like, like being shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or being shaded under his sadaqah. That 50,000 years day, as we mentioned in the last episode, that the day of resurrection will be 50,000 years long, will be reduced. It's not going to feel like 50,000 years. Rather, as the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa indicated in the Sahih, that it will be like the time when the sun declines to set until it finally sets. Privileges. And then comes the final certainty, which is, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زمرا. Those who disbelieve will be driven to the hellfire in groups. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ الْجَنَّةِ زمرا. And those who had taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world will be also taken to Jannah in groups. Jannah and hellfire, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the everlasting place, not this dunya. Jannah 
is the everlasting place for the believers. Hellfire is the everlasting place for the disbelievers. In Sahih al-Bukhari, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes for us Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anh that when the people of Jannah are finally in Jannah and the people of the hellfire are finally in the hellfire, death will be transformed into a form of a horned ram and it will be placed between the hellfire and Jannah and a caller will ask the dwellers of Jannah, Ya Ahlal Jannah, O dwellers of Jannah, do you know who this is? The dwellers of Jannah will look and stare and then the same question will be given, will be addressed. The dwellers of the hellfire will be addressed with the same question. Oh, dwellers of the hellfire, do you know who this is? They will say, yes, this is death. We know it. We experienced it in this world. And then that caller will command for that horned ram to be slaughtered. Death will die and then it will be said to the dwellers of Jannah O dwellers of Jannah eternity O dwellers of hellfire eternity the people of Jannah will increase in their joy because لا يذوقون فيها الموت إلا الموتة الأولى in this life أخي in this life sister you're always threatened by death in Jannah that threat is removed they will not taste death anymore after they have tasted death in the first life. As for the kafir, they will actually have a wish to die. It will be said to them, eternity in the hellfire, and they will increase in sorrow because not even death, the death wish will be granted. وَنَادَوْا يَا مَالِكْ O Malik, لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ can your Lord make us die? قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ No, you have to stay in the hellfire. لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ The truth came to you in this dunya. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَكُمْ لِلْحَقِّ كَارِهُونَ But the majority of you are hateful to that truth. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the beauty of our deen that you know that you were not created in vain. Do you think that we have created you for no purpose? It's beautiful. You know, I still recall these singers growing up. They used to sing, جِئْتُ لَا أَدْرِي مِنْ أَيْنَ أَتَيْتُ وَلَكِنِّي أَتَيْتُ فَبَصَرْتُ طَرِيقًا أَمَامِي فَمَشَيْتُ لَا أَدْرِي مِنْ أَيْنَ جِئْتُ وَمِنْ أَيْنَ أَتَيْتُ وَلَا إِلَى أَيْنَ أَتَيْتُ This is the misguided kafir, this believer. This is someone who is misguided. He doesn't know where he came from. He doesn't know why he is here. He doesn't know where is he going to and he doesn't know what is going to happen. Oh dear Muslims, raise your heads because you know, you know you came from Allah and you know you are going back to Allah. So prepare for that meeting. Inna lillahi, we are from Allah. Wa inna ilayhi, and to him, raji'oon, we shall return. Why? What are we doing here? وَمَا خَلْ The one who made you, the one you returned to him, he said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ You are here to worship and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslims need to go back and study the inevitable journey in details in order to wake up again and realize that this world it's just a piece in a chain. It's just one piece, one phase in the phases 
of the inevitable journey. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in the last episode, we asked this question, why the Muslims are heedless? All what I said and all what I'll say, inshallah, is from the Quran and from the Sunnah. And they hear it all the time. They may hear it in Khutbatul Jum'ah. They may hear it in a TV show. But yet, you will be saddened to learn that the way that we act is not indicating that we are certain about these certainties. And by the way, this is a disease that is to be cured. And there is a cure for it in Islam. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ Listen, the stopper, the agonies of death will bring you the truth. The truth that you will die. This is what you've been avoiding and evading all your life. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ Listen, وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ Every soul will be brought with an angel driving it, an angel to bear witness, لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا You were heedless. Why? The question, why the Muslims are heedless from these certainties? And what is the solution? What is the cure? This is the purpose. This is why we are to look at the inevitable journey again and study it. It is time to wake up. It is time to work for the phases of the journey that will take place after this dunya. And the dunya is just the time to work. The rest of the phases you will be dealt with according to the way that you behaved and you acted in this world. This world is the farm where you plant a seed, the harvest of which will take you to a garden in the graveyard, to a comfortable standing in the day of resurrection, or to a final everlasting abode in Jannah or the contrary of this. You are granted the freedom to choose. It's your call. But the inevitable journey will shed more light for you to make the right decision. We will take a break and come back to answer the question why the Muslims are heedless from these certainties. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The scale of justice will be broke before man Now you shall have to explain